Hi, I'm Kathy Thomas. Blake Melgren, the executive chef and owner at Craft House in Dana Point, is a master at building irresistible flavors. He spikes yellowtail with components that accent the fish to perfection. I can hardly wait. Chef, you've got some beautiful yellowtail. How are you gonna doll it up? So we're gonna make some cream corn to be the base of it, and then we're gonna saute some beautiful summer vegetables, and then make a little uh, peach and watermelon relish to go on top. It just sounds so wonderful. So we're gonna start with the cream corn first with some beautiful yellow corn out of the Coachella Valley. Normally, you wanna shave it down as close to the cob as possible. Mm -hmm. In this application, you wanna leave a little bit of meat on the corn still because we're gonna grate the cob afterwards to get all that corn milk off the cobs. Is it best to do this at the last minute? You can make all the elements ahead of time. The relish actually is even better once it sits. A Little bit of olive oil in the pan. Whole cloves of garlic first, because we're gonna end up pureeing this. And this is a substantial amount. Yeah, I mean, there's, in my opinion, there's no such thing as too much garlic in anything. All right. One large shallot, let it get some nice color. In the meantime, we're gonna make some corn milk. We're gonna take a box grater, a little hand grater, doesn't really matter, whatever you got available at home. Just go, go ahead and grate it up, and then that'll get you that nice additional kind of corn sweetness. Look at that, it's a substantial amount. Substantial amount of corn goodness right there. Mm -hmm. You gotta, gotta get it all in your dish. We're gonna add some of that corn we just cut off the cup. It already smells good, chef. The summertime is my favorite time of year, simply for corn. You can go super savory with it, you can go sweet with it, you can do dessert with it. Doesn't really matter, it's corn, it's fantastic. A little bit of salt and pepper in there just to help everything break down. And then we're gonna add some cream just to cover and then let it steep. And then we're gonna take a little bit of time. We've tied it up with a little butcher's twine just to make it easier to find. Do you wanna keep it at a simmer? Simmer, yeah, because mm -hmm. with cream, it's a little dangerous on the stove, gets too hot, it'll start boiling over, and then you got a big old mess to clean up. It's... And I love this trick. You've even got it threaded through the hole in the handle. Exactly, you're not gonna lose no. it. You're not gonna have to go fishing for your time back at the end. But we're gonna start on the uh, summer veggies. Take your pick, your zucchini, your yellow summer squash, or your Mexican white squash. I'm a big fan of the Mexican white squash. I love it. Give ourselves a nice flat surface here. Dice these up. And I love a short bladed cleaver. Obviously oh, you do too. I love a good veg cleaver. I love the way you're building fruit and vegetables into this dish. I think there's there's so much something so fun about putting fruit with fish. You get that nice sweetness. Mm -hmm. It kind of counterbalances this natural saltiness of a seaf animal. Then we got some asparagus. We're just gonna put a little bias cut on them, mm -hmm. hard angle, and just slice it down. And then we've got some wild mushrooms that we brought in. Beach is the varietal uh, in English, shimiji and hon shimiji mm -hmm. in Japanese. I think they're my favorite mushroom in the world. Nice meatiness to them. Not that usual earthy mustiness, their traditional button mushroom. Fantastic. One of my favorites. They're also pretty to look at. Oh, they're adorable. I mean, look at these yeah. things. They're just so cute. Yeah. So we're going to get some oil hot in the pan here. Always start with your longest cook time item first. A little salt. A little pepper in here. Then we'll go in with everybody in the pool. Come All on. All right. Again, a little more salt. A little more pepper. We got some garlic and shallot right here. Mm -hmm. A little, little herb mix that I use on pretty much everything. So it's uh, thyme, rosemary, chive, and parsley. We'll put a little bit in in the beginning. Throw a little more fresh in right at the end. A little more oil in here as I well. I really like that tip. That's really good to know. So I got us some beautiful yellow watermelon from Murray Farms. Look at that. You hear watermelon, you expect it to be red. I'm gonna grab some yellow ones. You've got some nectarines here? I got some nectarines. If I was making this in the fall, can you suggest something to substitute for the nectarines? I think apple would be a good bet. You could do it with citrus as well. And I love it that you left the skin on for texture and color. You need to peak all your senses when you eat. Just a touch of salt. Mm -hmm. Bring out all those flavors. And then a little bit of basil. Give it that nice little herbaceous note. We'll get the uh, pan hot for the yellow tail. For the cream corn, we'll go ahead and take that cream mixture, pull the thyme out, puree it all up. You can throw it in a blender. You can use a hand blender. So we'll take that corn milk, stir that in. 
And then we'll also add that last ear of corn that we had. In the time you cook the fish, it'll be ready to serve. If home cooks are making this dish, they don't have to make anything else because you've got your vegetables, you've got your fruit, you've got your protein. It's all on one plate. Oh, only way to do it. Simple, yeah. easy, little oil in the pan here. Let that get nice and hot. So we've got the beautiful yellowtail here. So a little salt and pepper on a little that yellowtail. little salt and pepper. There we go. Give it a good push. Then you'll maximize your surface area with mm -hmm. the fish. And then you'll get that nice sear all the way around. I like to take it to about mid rare medium, so you get a nice little bit of pink right through the center of the fish. And I assume you can use all different varieties. Yeah, fish. you can go halibut, you can go cod. All the elements in this dish are hearty enough that they can handle anything. The fish will tell you when it's ready. Here we are. Got a nice oh, crust there. That. We can start building our plating up while the fish finishes. But I love being able to get the corn all over the bottom of the plate so you can kind of get this creamed corn mixture in every single bite. We got our veggies that we got finished up here. And remember, as I said, a little bit of fresh herbs in right at mm -hmm. the end. Yellowtail's finished up. Give it a little squeeze right on the sides. Mm -hmm. Should have a little bit of give. We got that beautiful relish. Beautiful. And that is the pan roasted yellowtail with some sauteed summer squash, wild mushrooms, and asparagus and cream corn. Thank you, Blake. Thank you for having me. Here's a quick tip from Melissa's. Roasted grapes are irresistible teamed with cheeses. I like to serve a spreadable cheese concoction on toast topped with shriveled, flavorful roasted grapes. Either as appetizers or an after-dinner cheese course. Start by preheating the oven to 400 degrees, and then in a small, I use an eight inch square uh, baking dish, I add about a cup of seedless red grapes, a couple of tablespoons of port, and a little bit of sugar. These are going to go into that 400 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. You want them shriveled and looking yummy. I have some right here that have already been roasted. I'm gonna just lightly salt them. And then we need to make our cheese mixture. Blue cheese, I'm using gorgonzola. And then an equal amount of mascarpone, which is like an Italian cream cheese. Just using a fork, I'm gonna mix the two together. And I think that looks lovely. Now the bread, you want something rustic. My very favorite is to get a rustic bread that has nuts in it. But at the market yesterday when I went, they didn't have any. So I just brought a nice rustic loaf of whole wheat bread and sliced it fairly thin and then toasted it crunchy. On goes the cheese. And I'm pretty generous because I love cheese. And then the grapes. If there's any syrup, I want to include that in there too. I could put a little leaf of basil on this if I wanted to, make it a little fancier. Can you imagine cutting these into halves and serving them as an appetizer with a nice cold glass of wine in the summer? Maybe a little rosé or serving this after dinner. Delicious. The produce aisles are filled with so many delicious choices. Try something new, have an adventure.